Well, Rovers, in this video, it's all about scarfing. We're going to start off scarfing some pine, some clear pine, into lengths that are going to be about well, 13 and a half feet approximately. And that's going to be used to double the size, the width of the shear stringer so that we can attach the sides, which brings us to our second scarfing project, which is we have to scarf the plywood into lengths that will be, well, the same length as that shear stringer. So there's a lot to do, time to crack on. The Wave Rover 650, a design based on my single-handed ocean voyages. She's small, light, but easy to build and strong enough to cross any ocean. My name's Alan Mulholland and this is the Wave Rover story. So I just want to walk you through my thinking process here. So I just, well, you just saw me cut the, uh, the tail ends off of the two by four that formed a support on the forward bulkhead. And the reason was because I wanted to bend this one by four over what would be the cabin side. Now, without bending this one way or another, it lines up pretty well with the top corner of all the bulkhead beams. And that's kind of the way we designed it. Now, uh, which means that when I make a piece of plywood and scarf it into the 13 odd feet that I need to cover the cabin side, the top edge will be a straight line. The bottom edge, on the other hand, it has the shear of the boat to contend with. Uh, so that would be too complicated to mathematically work out. So it's better that I just have one straight line bend the piece of plywood on here and then mark the bottom edge. Okay, so that's one of the tricks, uh, tricks, one of the th uh, things I have to accomplish. The next thing I need to do is I need to notch in a one by two piece of pine that will follow this shear the full distance. And uh, the reason for that is that will give us the same curve that we currently see in between the bulkheads and it'll give me a really nice gluing surface for the cabin side to go onto. Uh, I debated whether or not I should do that pine because it's a fairly complex procedure to, to level it out the whole way. Not impossible. We'll be using epoxy and you know with its gap filling um, properties that that will you know, that will make it a whole lot easier. It's still complex. So the other option was to leave the pine out, put the plywood on, and just try to bend it in or out using a combination of, of uh, ideas from, you know, stitching it with copper wire to bending a piece of one by four over top of it. it you know, we, we could probably get the same curve. But, how do I secure it there? Well, perhaps a great big fillet and then glass. But I'm not really happy with that because, yes, the glass would go over the plywood side and over the fillet, but then it would go over this fairly short section of, of pine. And I'm not really feeling that would be a strong enough joint. So that's why I'm going through the extra effort of the pine glue the side on and then in the spring when the weather warms up we will fare the outside and we will put biaxle over top of that and then we'll fiberglass the whole side. So it, it will be strong in the end. So the next thing I have to accomplish will be to set up some sort of uh, reinforcement on the aft bulkhead and then scarf up a piece of pine and then notch it in and glue it. Uh, it's a fair bit of work and of course it has to be done on both sides. A lot to do, 
Time to crack on. Well, the pine I have is about 10 feet long, so I need to scarf two pieces together at a ratio of 8 to 1 to get the 14 feet that I need to start with. If you're interested in building your very own Wave Rover scarfing jig for either lumber or plywood, you'll find a link in the video description below. Well, that's a nice bit of pine I've been working with. I sourced it about, oh, six or eight months ago, and uh, nice clear pieces, some of it up to 12 inches in width and almost an inch thick. So I'm now going to sneak this into the house to do the big glue up. Well, desperate measures call for desperate times. I'm now in the nice warm house and we're getting ready for the glue up the scarf joint of the pine. Um, just occupying a, a big chunk of space here. These pieces of pine are a little over, well, they're approximately 14 feet in length right now. And these are the joints right here. So I've I've just lined everything up and it's really handy to put little hash marks like that on the pine to help you line it up once the glue is set. We don't need a lot of clamping pressure because we'll be using epoxy, which as I've said many times has gap filling properties. So just a little bit of tension is all we need. Next, uh, now that I know uh, everything's lined up, it's just a matter of wetting out. Okay, so these are the surfaces we'll be Scarfing. I'm just going to wet it out as we always do Okay, so that's the consistency of what we're dealing with. That'll be a nice gap filling glue All right now to just put it on So what I'm doing is I'm lining my hash marks up and I'm clamping over here and that's just to prevent the boards from skating. You may have to adjust these. Okay, now Using the lines as my index. Okay, we're good right there. Here, same thing. There we go. Okay, good, we're all glued up. Okay, so we have the uh, board supported their entire length, and then we get to the scarf joints themselves, and you can see how right here, the uh, hash marks all line up, and that was important because when those line up, then we have a consistent thickness in our scarf. Same on this one. And you can do that a couple of different ways. When you go to scarf these, you can put a little finish nail through here, but that's, you know, not really necessary in this application because I can just, with a clamp here and another clamp on the other side of it, that'll prevent the board from sliding. If I didn't have these clamps, these extra clamps on here, as I put pressure on the joint itself, it has a tendency to slip. And uh, that's not what we want to accomplish. So these are things you want to think about before you apply the glue, because once you put the glue on, uh, you, you're, uh, you know, you're on the clock. You only have a little bit of time, especially in a warm environment like our cozy house here. Now, the advantage of being in this cozy house is I think I can order up a coffee right away. So here I'm using the Wave Rover plywood scarfing jig. If you're interested in building your own, you'll find a link to plans in the video description. 
Well, I have to say I'm quite impressed with how well my jig works. Well, it's far too cold to be glowing this up out here, so we're off to Mrs. Rover's dining room to do the big glue up. Everything's just coated in ice right now. Hence the reason we have to do a glue up inside Mrs. Rover's dining room. Okay, so let's do the big reveal here. Okay, there's the scarf joint on the pine. We didn't really have to add that much more. A little over, well, about four feet was added on to the pine to get it out to the length I need. And that's what it looks like on the surface. Now. Some of the other things I did off camera the, uh, the top of this beam has all been leveled out to the same as the top of this beam. We've test fitted the sides, which are located right here. They're just standing by and they've been scarfed and all the glue is nice and hard. And then I also leveled out the beams. So if you watch, let's see, we'll try to do this. There we go. So they're nicely arranged that we should get a nice plane coming straight down. Next step, we have to uh, bevel the pine so that it fits all along the stringer here. And so what I did was I cut a few test pieces and this is one right here. And there we have it. That's the same angle as the side. And that angle remains the same for pretty much two thirds of my cabin, right to about here. And then from this point on, I have to angle this a bit up to maintain the same angle as the side of the cabin. So. So really what I'll do is I'll just cut the pine to the same bevel as this piece, which is 16 degrees. And then I'll just hand plane the last, oh, I guess about four or five feet of the stringer. I just have to make it a little steeper. It's either that or, you know, you, you probably could just get away with just having a, a bigger glue joint. It's not a big deal because we're using epoxy and it has gap filling. So you don't have to be ultra precise to make it work. Okay, so now we're just about to uh, cut the bevel. Bevel means an angle like that on the pine, the clear pine that we've, we've cut. So that is 16 degrees. And now I'm just going to push a 14 foot length through the saw. So I have the shear stringer dry fitted on both sides now. It was um, pretty easy to get it on up until about this bulkhead right here. At this point, 
Well, it's uh, under tremendous strain because it, it curves in, but it curves up as well. But we've got it under control. Mrs. Rover is, uh, she's away for the next couple of days. And she, when she comes back, she's bringing me a few more clamps. And we're, uh, and, I, and I definitely need the help of a second person to put this on. So we found that in order to get this in place, I've had to drive a couple of screws in through the top here. Uh, there's only three on each side. I'll have to pull those afterward and fill them, of course. Then we'll be able to put the sides on. But overall, uh, this is probably one of the more challenging uh, challenging projects to the build at attaching this extra shear stringer on after this the sides if you do it and you do a good job on this the sides will go on really easily but the other thing I'm up against are of course temperatures and it's just too cold over the next couple of days to do this anyway but that that doesn't stop us I have some other projects that I can get on with where I'm not so heat sensitive well, I think that went pretty well. Now, join me in the next episode where we will get these pine stringers attached permanently and we will get the plywood sides on. Getting those plywood sides on, the sides of the boat on, that is a major step forward for me because with that in place, heating the boat is going to become so much easier. And with that, I should be able to get back on schedule and be able to have the launch of Wave Rover this summer. So until next time, Rovers, thanks for watching. I'd like to take a moment to honor the Wave Rover benefactors. So what is a benefactor? Well, these folks have made a contribution of $100 US or more to the project, and their names will be affixed to a bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our circumnavigation. Now these donations truly are much appreciated. Well, the Wave Rover patrons, with their pledges of support, really do make the creation of these videos possible. Now, if you'd like to know more about Wave Rover's patron page and Benefactor's Bulkhead, I have links to both those pages in the video description. Now another way to help Wave Rover, and it doesn't cost you a dime, is by sharing our content on your social media. So now, as always, Rovers, thanks for watching. Give us one more. <laughs>